to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 138. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming by each week. Some of you guys I know so well, I feel like you all are my close friends. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. And if you enjoy what you see, please click the little red subscription box uh, button down below. And if you click the little icon that looks like a bell next to it, you will get notifications anytime I post a video, which is always on Saturday, usually on Wednesday, and sometimes I throw other things in between as they come up. So um, I just want to say thank you once again for those of you who are still wishing me well on my surgery recovery time. Uh, things are going well. I got my stitches out today, or today. I got them out Wednesday. Today is Friday. Uh, so that part is feeling better. I only had two stitches, but they were stingy feeling. So um, I'm still having some pain from it, but it's getting better. And I'm using a cane instead of crutches now. So moving up here, I've got two more weeks off of work, um, potentially, unless it doesn't heal right. And then I have to take off longer. Uh, right now, there's no way I could go back to work because I haven't even been able to do stairs yet. So um Anyway, but I'm feeling better, and let's get started. I've gotten lots done this week, especially on a sweater. It's not finished yet. I had really hoped last night I stayed up till after midnight, and I kept thinking, maybe I'll get it done. No, I was close, but no cigar. Um, I did. Let me show you where I got to from last week. Last week, I was right here. I had just separated for the shoulders. I went all the way up this side, and then I went all the way up this side. So the sweater upper part is finished. The collar is on. I did some beading, as you can see, right here. So I get it close enough, there you can see them. There's some faceted kind of iridescent aqua color beads. I have one sleeve done. Now, I did make a little mistake on this sweater. I made it wider than the, the one I am wearing is out of the same yarn, okay? I kind of modeled it off the same pattern. But as you can see with this one, the sleeve ended right here, and then I crocheted an edge here because I made it to fit me well. This one, somehow or other, I made a little too wide, so it is slightly too big on me around, but it's okay. It's not like huge. It's just a little big. It's a little too short though. It's a cropped top version. Katrina is not wearing a cropped top. No way, no way. Um, but I ended up making it wider than this one. So the sleeve part is actually done because the sleeves come down to about here. So one of the sleeves I finished already. And you can see I did an I-cord binding on this. And I also did the I cord bind off around the neck. So it's like a roll, which creates like a rolled edge to it. And I just like the look of it. It just looks very finished. So what I have to do yet, um, I have to do the I cord bind off on the other sleeve. And then because it's way too short, thankfully I have extra yarn. I am going to add to the bottom, to the bottom here. This was a fans and feathers edging. So I'm probably going to crochet because it'll go faster than trying to pick up all of these stitches all the way around because there's over 300 stitches. Um, and I would have to knit several rows where if I do a crochet and just do a row or two of double crochet, it will make the difference up. So I'm going to try to continue sort of in this pattern by, you know, increasing and decreasing. So the little ruffle, I, I like the ruffled edge here. So I'm going to do that so that it kind of keeps that same shape. But um, definitely it needs to be longer. So that I will hopefully get finished today. This is Friday. So next week you should see a finished object here. So that is my one semi-finished project. The next project I have, I'm doing my knitting ones first and then I'll do the crochet. So my knitting, my other knitting project that I have going on, this is where I was last week. 
and the stitch marker here or the progress keeper is a little starfish. See if I can turn it so you can see it. Yeah, little starfish. And that was from Lucy Solar. She and I did a yarn box swap a while back, and that was one of the stitch markers. The other one of the other stitch markers she gave me, I'm actually using in this sweater. So um you can see where I was last week. I have gone from here up to here. There are 10 sections of this gray before you get into the next part of the pattern. So I am at, I'm getting ready to do the seventh section. So that's what it looks like so far. And this is the Swedish lines pattern. Uh, it is from Blueprint, which is Craftsy, or it used to be Craftsy, now they call it Blueprint. So that is the shawl pattern. Then I have my design, or not my design wrap. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is my scrappy blanket that I am doing in the shawl stitch. And this, here's where I was last week. And the stitch marker here is from Kathy Tinkler. And I had to use a purple one because at the time I stopped, I was on a purple row. And she and I both like purple and the stitch marker progress keeper that she sent me is purple and then it says joy right here behind it there you can see it so I did uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine rows of this and I'm having so much fun with this it's like this is what I want to work on um, I just love the way this is trying. I love the colors, the way this is kind of looking. It I just reminds me of an old quilt. I don't know. I like it. It's fun. It's mindless. I'm having a good time with it. It's, I'm having a hard time working on anything else because every time I sit down, it's like, this is so easy and I don't have to have a pattern and I can just play. So, you know, and I, I'm having fun putting colors together, just kind of randomly grabbing. I am trying to do a solid and a variegated and back and forth that way, but I'm having so much fun with this that I'm having a hard time putting it down. Now we come to the design wrap. Yeah. I ripped the whole thing out. Yes. I'm redoing it. The reason I ripped it out, if you remember it last week, here's what it looks like now. It's about half the size of what it was. I had some scallopy looking edges that kind of reminded me of the virus shawl all along the edge here which I liked and I thought they looked pretty, but when I tried doing the wing sections that are gonna go out from the sides of this, it wasn't working right. Um, it was, I had too much, too much bulk. It, it just wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. I wanted to have a very crisp angle coming off and it wasn't working that way. Um, and I also, because I'm fairly new to writing crochet patterns, I've written quite a few knitting patterns, but crochet patterns, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was written in a way that everybody could understand it. And I didn't feel like my directions were overly clear in a couple of spots. So I started to just try to correct them by looking at the pattern. And the more I thought about it, I was like, no, I want to re-knit it or re-crochet it as I go so I can make sure I have all the details correct. So needless to say, it got ripped out. And so I have actually re-knit pretty much, uh, let's see, maybe from here. I, I think I kept to here. I don't think I, did I go all the way down? I might have ripped it all. I don't remember if I ripped all the way back or if I just ripped back to where it was just off of the basic granny square. But yes, so I started rewriting it. So that is my wrap story. A little disappointed but with it, but I'd rather rip it out now than get it further down the road and then go, oops, and have to rip out more. So anyway, that's the progress on that one. And then last, I have the diamond art that I've been working on. So here it is. And I don't know how well the diamond stuff, the little jewels are going to show up but I got all of the tree trunk done this week. There you can see it. I got all of the tree trunk done. So all of the black has been done and the lower half of the tree, you can see the parts that are sparkling, that's the parts that are done. And 
This is a lot of fun. Um, again, it's kind of mindless. It's paint by numbers without the mess unless you spill the beads on the floor. Um, thankfully, that has not happened. But I'm not done yet. There's always time. Um, and the process of doing the diamond art or I don't know, I guess it's called diamond painting. Also, it's, it's under different names, but they're little plastic faceted little gems. And the picture itself is color coded and it has little keys. And then you just look over at the key and it tells you what number of color. So sort of like paint by number. Um, but the picture itself is adhesive. So I have learned one thing very important with doing the uh, diamond art with the adhesive backing. You must pull your hair out of the way. I keep getting my hair stuck, leaning over, my hair falls forward and it ends up stuck into the adhesive because where the picture is is all sticky. You lift up a, a film of, of uh, like protective stuff and that's what you stick it directly to. Um, I, like I said, I keep getting my hair stuck in my, into the, into the uh, artwork. And uh, it, it brings back some crazy memories because years ago, funny story alert, uh, years ago, my husband and I and another couple used to sing um, as a bluegrass gospel group. And our kids sang along with us and they helped us out and stuff. So, so anyway, um, the four of us adults and the three kids, all of us went away together one weekend to a cabin. Um, the cabin had a lot of problems with flies. And so they had a fly pest strip, you know, like a big it's sticky adhesive tape thing to catch flies in the kitchen, hanging over the kitchen sink. Now, you kind of know where this story is going really, really fast. But, yes, in the course of 12 hours, I got my face stuck to the fly pest strip three times, and it had flies on it. It was totally gross. It kept getting stuck right to the side of my face. Every time I did dishes and leaned forward to, to start scrubbing, things got stuck in my hair. By the end of the, the weekend, when we got ready to leave, I was beginning to feel like the guy in the movie from the 1950s, The Fly, you know, at the very end of the movie where he's going, help me, help me, help me. That's kind of what I felt like because people had to keep disentangling me from the fly pest strip. So that's the one thing I've learned with the diamond art. It reminds me of a fly pest strip because that's what you're kind of sticking the diamonds to. But I am having a lot of fun and I got one to give to my mother as well. So I have to give that to her yet. Um, but I think she'll have fun with it too because she likes doing the adult coloring books and she likes doing mandala, like the circle color things. She likes doing that. So I found one for her that's like that. So I thought that might be a new craft for her that she would enjoy. So anyway, let's take a look at what you guys are making. But before we do, I wanted to explain one thing because somebody submitted something that was very interesting this week. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit and tell you the history of it before you see the pictures. So Fran Derrick, who lives in northern Scotland, um, sent me a picture of some nail binding or nail binding that she's doing. Um, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere here, how it's spelled. Um, it does have a little accent mark over the A, but my computer won't do the little accent mark. There's a little circle that goes over the A. Uh, but anyway, nail binding or nail binding, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Uh, the word, the nail part means needle. It predates knitting and crochet by thousands of years. Uh, in fact, there are some examples of it in museums that for years were thought were knitting. It wasn't until they started looking at how it was uh, disintegrating that they realized it was not unraveling like knitting or crochet. Uh, the oldest example is from 6500 BC. Yes, that's how old it is. Uh, it was found in a cave in Israel. There's other examples that have been found in Denmark, Egypt, Peru, and in England, uh, as well as, um, I guess, Scotland as well, I think. Uh, but other places in Europe, we'll say it that way. Um, it has short lengths of yarn, so that's what made it popular and why it predates knitting and crochet, because the process of making long lengths of yarn, um, that ability didn't come until later on when they could spin those, those lengths. But because now binding involves short lengths, they could do it more easily. Uh, it could be done as a cottage industry. It's actually done by an oversized, it looks like a needle on steroids. It's, it looks like the needle is probably about this big. 
I'm guessing there from the picture, it looks like it's about this big. Um, it looks like an oversized sewing needle, but it can be made from wood or plastic or bone. And the process of doing the stitches is threading the needle in and out around your thumb. So you use the thumb and it kind of forms a knot. Uh, the unique thing with it is it does not unravel like knitting and crochet where you can pull the yarn and it just comes apart. This doesn't. It stays put together. It was popular in Northern Europe up until the 1950s. So it is it is a craft that's still done, but it's not as popular as it used to be. Uh, so anyway, when Fran showed the pictures of that, I thought it was especially interesting. And I did talk about it year, a couple of years ago. When I first started my podcast, I did a couple of segments on the history of knitting and the history of crochet. And I did talk about it in, I believe it's the history of knitting. If you want to watch either of those videos, I will pop them up over here someplace. Um, but anyway, they were, it was interesting to hear and read about the history of knitting and crochet. But like I said, now binding, um, precedes that by quite a, quite a few thousand years. So now that you know what you're looking at, um, I'm going to do the show and tell.
So if you saw also in the show and tell, Cindy Suttles, who is Cindy Hart's crochet, she actually had those little ice pop covers. The minute I saw those with the little shark tails, I, I started humming Baby Shark. Um, those of you who have grandchildren probably are aware of that song. It's a little people song. It's an annoying little people song, but it's, it's very repetitive, but little people seem to really enjoy it. But the minute I saw the little shark tails, that song has been stuck in my head all morning. Thank you very much, Cindy. <laughs> so, um, anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh, I guess we will get into what am I reading? I finished my one book about the donut series. This is the donut series by Jessica Beck. This book, I just got it started today. It's called Sweet Suspects. This is book number 12. There's like over 30 in this series. Um, yes, Jessica Beck is very prolific. But anyway, uh, it's about a lady named Suzanne, um, in case you aren't familiar with this series. Suzanne Hart owns a donut shop. There are donut recipes in here. And there's some that really sound good, but Dave is diabetic and I'm trying to lose weight, so I would love to try them out, but I have not. Um, but it's funny because one of my patrons uh, at the library, she and I have the same reading tastes. So when she comes on board the bookmobile, she'll tell me what she's reading and I'll tell her what's reading. We've, we've compared notes. She's the one that got me hooked on this series. Um, and this same author puts out a series under a different name about pizza under Chris Cavender. And it has pizza recipes in it. And then there's another one that's a diner series that um, he put out, or he or she. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if Jessica Beck is male or female. Because the author writes under quite a few different names. Um, and they have quite a few different series out. But there's one that's a, a classic diner series. And it's about a, the diner owner and her grandfather. And they investigate murders. And that one had some really good recipes in it as well. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's what I'm reading. So that's book number 12, because I've caught up on all of my knit and crochet books right now on the mysteries that have come out. There is a new Murder, She Wrote mystery that came out, but because I'm not at work right now, I can't get the book. So um, that's called, I think, Murder in Red, because I read all the Murder, She Wrote series, too. I have lots of series that I read. But anyway, this is the one I'm currently working on, and... It, you can't go wrong with donuts. I mean, you know. <laughs> so if you hear squeaking in the background, uh, we have our we are we are babysitting our grand pig. Uh, my granddaughter has a guinea pig, and I think she's had him maybe three years. He's he's pretty old for a guinea pig, uh, but anyway, he is staying with us. So we are pig sitting, and I'll stick some pictures in of, of him. His name's Milky Way. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be pig sitting, and he actually likes Dave better than he likes me. I give him carrots. Um, he eats them, but he kind of turns his nose up at me a little bit. But when Dave walks into the room, he gets very excited. So Dave is his favorite person, but I think Dave's been Dave secretly feeds him cucumbers, and he likes those. So um, yes, he has his favorites, and I'm not one of them. So now let's get on to acquisitions. Katrina did a little shopping. If you watched my video on Monday, you've already seen this, but I ordered some yarn from a sale that Blueprint had a, um, a week or so ago. And so I got some yarn. I do believe I am going to try to crochet a cardigan. That'll be my first garment that I've made. But it is green or sock weight yarn and I am doing it in autumn colors. I'm not going to pull them all out but I'll just pull one of each color. So those are the colors that I'm doing. They're a little bit more vibrant than what's showing up in the in the video but it's pretty close. So it's greens and golds and kind of pumpkin colors and I might, this is also, it's an alpaca it is called Camino Alpaca by Bremont Yarn. And it is extremely soft. Um, so, yes, I'm looking forward to doing that. So that is going to be a cardigan, hopefully. Hopefully. So um, 
That is my acquisition. I did buy some other things, but they haven't come in yet. So Monday there will be a video because the items are due in. One's due in today, which is Friday, and one is due in on Saturday. And what I got, um, there was a sale at Consumer Crafts last week that I talked about. And I bought a, several things of cotton because I want to make the pot holders that Yoka had made a couple weeks ago in the show and tell. And there is a tutorial to do that. And I also saw that the Secret Yarnery has a tutorial for a doily that also looks very similar. So um, anyway, I want to try to make some pot holders because mine need to be replaced. And I thought, why not try it? So I have some yarn coming in from there that I'm excited to try. And I also ordered something from Knit Crate. Uh, one of the benefits of Knit Crate is you do get at the end of the month, after all the boxes have gone out, they run a sale on what's left. And so I bought some yarn. They were running a 60% off sale. You also get stash points for every box that you order, uh, like through your monthly, monthly subscription. You get, I think it's 25 points. I'm not sure about that, but you get what are called stash points, which are they're like frequent flyer miles. You get to cash them in for for money uh, towards purchases. So when they run these sales, you can also dip in there and get some deals that way, too. So a while back, it was earlier this spring, there was a color that came out one month and there was only one skein of yarn in it. It was called Titmouse, which is a bird. And it's a navy color and a charcoaly gray and a kind of real soft white and um, a, like a navy, what did I say, navy blue, navy blue charcoal oh, no, and a yellow. I knew there was four colors in there. Um, but it's really, really pretty. And But at the time, there was only one skein of yarn in the box. Now, the box I get usually has two skeins, but because this was considered an ultra-luxury yarn and it was more expensive, they just put one skein of yarn in the box that month. And I really wanted a second one. So I got a second one at a really cheap price. I think I paid $12 for it, and it's a $37 yarn. So I now will have two skeins of that so I can make something a little bit more substantial out of that yarn. And if I remember rightly, it has cashmere and silk in it. I do remember it's really soft. I would show it to you, except it's upstairs and I can't do the stairs yet. So if you stay tuned on Monday for that video, you will see the, the unboxing of both of those. I'll do them together. Uh, so I will be getting that. Now it's time for... Now, there is a lot of summer sales going on this week, and things are ramping up for the July 4th sales here in the U.S. So anyway, let's get started with Annie's. Annie's is offering $2 off any pattern download. Not the paper copy, but the download copy. There's $2 off. In the crochet, crochet section, in their new arrivals, they have... Uh, a Simply Sweet Doily Kit. So when it says kit, I'm assuming it's the pattern and the yarn for $12.99. They also have a really pretty sea spray tunic. Now it's just the pattern, uh, but that runs between $7.99 and $9.99, which to me is a little pricey for a pattern. Uh, but if you get the download, you can get $2 off of that. Um, but it was really pretty. I like the colors of the, in the picture. It's kind of like um, just kind of oceany type of colors. So anyway, thought that was pretty. They also have two summer bags. It's a, it is one pattern. It has two different bags that you can make uh, in crochet, and that's for $5.99. Then over in the knit in their new arrival section, they have a cappuccino cowl, which was really pretty, and that's $6.99. They also have a Maycroft shawl, which I thought was pretty, and it's also $6.99. And again, the downloads, you can get $2 off. So if you do that, opt for that instead of the paper version, just print it out yourself. You can save $2 just doing that. So that is Annie's. And all the links to these sales are down below. If you click on that link, it will take you right over to that website. So Blueprint, which is also the old Craftsy, 
Uh, they are offering 40% off of their crafts and supplies right now, so that's a good deal. I've done some shopping at Blueprint lately because the autumn yarns that I just showed you uh, were from Blueprint and this shawl here with the Swedish lines, that was also from Blueprint. So they do run some good sales. Consumer Crafts has diamond dots. Uh, some of those ones, which is the same as the diamond art that I'm doing. Uh, they have some of them that are a little pricier, but they had some of them that were under $10. Uh, there were some of the simpler, easier patterns, but um, if you're looking for a nice, cheap Christmas gift for, for little grandkids or something, some of these were some of the easier patterns. Um, yeah, they were offering some of those, and again, that's Consumer Crafts. Create for Less has up to 70% off running in their clearance section. Hopium, uh, in their Stars of the Month, they have Yarn Art Begonia Melange, which is a sport weight mercerized cotton yarn. It's variegated, and it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. It's really, really pretty. Um, if I didn't already have more yarn, yarn on the way, I would probably get some of this because it's really pretty and it's a decent price. Uh, it's $2.70 per skein. And I believe it's 177 yards in a skein, in a 50-gram ball. Uh, but if you order 10 of them, you get it for $2.43 a piece. So that is Hobium. They also are offering in their clearance sexual section bundles of yarn. So you get a bundle. It's usually a five. Sometimes it's more. But it's usually a bundle of five skeins of yarn for under $10. So they have a whole bunch of stuff over there. So that's one to check out. Knit Crate, of course, offers your 20% off of your first subscription box. You do, do need to use the coupon code KCREATIONS20 in order to get that 20% off. Knit Picks is offering 40% off of their books, and they're running a summer yarn sale, so it's up to 50% off of over 1,200 yarns that they have. So that's a good sale going on. And Knit Picks runs some pretty good sales. Um, so anyway, that is one that's running there. Leisure Arts is having what they are calling a super sale, 50% off of their digital copies of their patterns. Now, Leisure Arts is known for their patterns. Uh, they are offering, like I said, 50% off of the digital downloads, 35% off of paper copies, and they have discounts on the diamond art, which is where I got my diamond art was from uh, Leisure Arts. They also have yarn and crafting supplies on sale. And if you order over $35, you can have free shipping. So um, I think that's just in the U.S. But um, so lots of stuff going on over at Leisure Arts. Lion Brand has some exciting information. They have teamed up with Crayola Crowns uh, or Crayons. I always say it Crowns, but it's Crayons. Um, you know, little kid crowns, coloring crowns. Uh, they've teamed up with that company and created some yarns. And so they are offering as an introductory offer to this new yarn, 30% off of their Crayola yarns. And the Crayola yarns are, some of them are kind of fun, like loopy, like novelty yarns. But they also have some yarn cakes that are 177 yards in a skein. And it is $3.49 right now as an introductory sale. They are on sale for $3.49. So that's a good deal. They also are offering a sale that I talked about. or I did a short little video. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I told you about a sale that was running. Um, you could get five skeins of yarn for $10. Now, it is only on select yarns. Because um, I know there was some question because some people were saying it wasn't working when they were trying the coupon. I went over and I, I checked it and it worked for me, but you have to apply it to only the yarns that are in their select. I'm guessing they're probably ones that, that they're trying to get rid of that weren't maybe as popular. Um, but there were, they did have some nice looking stuff over there. Uh, but you do need to buy in bundles of five skeins. They don't have to be all the same yarn in that five that grouping of five, but they have to be within the five selected yarns. Some of the yarns I know that were included in there were uh, Vanna's Choice Autumn Colorway. Um, 
There were um, Vanna's palette, which are a bunch of like little teeny mini skeins in a, in a set. And some of their homespun, uh, which is, I have, I bought some not too long ago. It's a chunkier yarn that it really knits up nice. I've, I've got a sweater out of it that I finally had to get rid of because I wore it so long it wore holes in it. But I bought enough to make two more uh, because it's really soft and it knits up really quick. And uh, so anyway, that is homespun. And I think the other one they had was, um, there might have been Woolies. I'm trying to remember if it was Woolies or if it was the home, home style. If you go over, if you click the link down below, you'll see a little in one of their, on, when it comes up to the main site, you will see a little window that now says five for 10 sale. So just click on that. It'll take you to which yarns are, are part of that promotion. So you do need to use a coupon code five, four, 10 to get that, that discount. And then lastly, I have some really exciting news. I'm now an affiliate for Ice Yarns. Yes. Uh, so I will be telling you about Ice Yarn sales. The link is down below. Um, I have, I as, as when you're watching this, I have ordered some Ice Yarn uh, because I want to try it out. I try to buy something from every company that I'm an affiliate at so that I can at least know what their service is like. Um, and I want to, I've heard a lot about ice yarns and I want to try it out. I know the secret yarnery gets ice yarn all the time and really likes it. And one of our viewers who has a channel, uh, Nana Rosie's Stitching Lounge, I think I'm saying that right. Um, she did actually a comparison between hobium yarns and ice yarns because it turns out some of them are the same yarn. They both come out of Turkey. Um, they have the same yarns, but they're under different names. And she kind of did a comparison between the two. So, uh, that was, it was very interesting. It was very helpful. So if you want to go check out her channel, that would be good. Um, because she did, she did a good job of comparison and she spent a lot of time and money doing it. So, um, yeah, if you want to go check that out, that would be a good one. But anyway, I am going to order some ice yarn and I forget what I've got on my cart. As I'm, as I'm filming this, it's sitting in the cart. I just have to hit the buy button, but I forget what it is, what I ordered. I don't remember. Oh, well, it'll be a surprise for both of us. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I am an affiliate for Ice Yarn. So if you click, if you want to buy Ice Yarn and you click through the link down below, I do get a small commission out of any of the sales um, being a, an affiliate for them, which helps support the channel for doing giveaways and things like that. Uh, we are going to have a giveaway coming up shortly. I just can't get upstairs to show you the skein of yarn. Uh, so anyway, it will be a skein of yarn and it's going to be coming up um once I can climb the stairs. So stay tuned for that. So coming videos, Monday will be the unboxing. Wednesday's video is going to be a requested video. Somebody asked me a while back, uh, would I do a video on doing lifelines for lace knitting? And I said, yes. And so I finally have something I can demonstrate it with. So I am going to be showing you now you might be going, what in the world is lifelines for knitting? Um, it's kind of like a safety net. When you're knitting lace, if you get messed up in the pattern, and it's very easy to get messed up in a pattern if you're knitting, if you're knitting lace or anything that has a lot of yarn overs. Yarn overs are what create the little holes in knitting. That's what a yarn over is. And when you do knitting, it's a, or when you do lace knitting, it's a lot of yarn overs, a lot of knitting two stitches together in order to create the hole or the different shapes within the, the lace itself. So if you get off in a pattern, it can be very frustrating. There have been times I've knit lace, I used to knit a lot of lace. There were times I had to rip back the entire pattern because I couldn't figure out where I had gotten off. So um, lifelines keep you from having to rip everything back. Um, it's, it's a safety net for knitting intricate things. So anyway, it's, it's an easy technique to do, and I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. So that will be Wednesday's video. So I hope you stop by on Monday and Wednesday to check out both of those. And thank you again for watching this week, 
and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.